In this video, we'll discuss the substitution method for integration. The first thing to keep in mind here is that all of the integral rules that we've learned so far don't depend on the name of the variable in question. So the integral of x to the n, or the integral of u to the n, t to the n, and so on, they all look the same. The answer doesn't depend on the name of that variable. So with that in mind, when we encounter a more complicated looking integral, like this one, the integral of the quantity 3x minus 7 to the fourth, we might have an idea about how to approach this using substitution. Our idea might be to create a new variable, maybe we'll call it u, and set u equal to 3x minus 7. If we do that substitution, we get what appears to be a much simpler looking integral, u to the fourth, rather than that complicated 3x minus 7 to the fourth. Continuing in this way, it looks like we get an answer of 1 fifth times 3x minus 7 to the fifth plus c. But if we try to check that answer by taking the derivative, we find that we don't get the original function that we started with. We get an extra factor of 3 from the chain rule. So what did we do wrong? What we did wrong is that we had an integral that looked like the integral of u to the fourth dx. So those variables didn't match up. If you think back to the, what the integral would have to have looked like, we would have needed to have an integral that looked like u to the fourth du. That really would have equaled one-fifth u to the fifth plus c. But if it's the integral of u to the fourth dx, then it doesn't work out that way. So how do we change the dx in our integral to a du? Well, just like with the chain rule, we need to think about the derivative of that inside function. So if we set u equal to 3x minus 7, we need to think about the derivative of that u. The derivative of u with respect to x is 3, and we're going to write that as du equals 3 dx. du dx isn't really a fraction, but it turns out that we can write it as du equals 3 times dx here. Okay, so let's think about how this is going to work. We know that du is 3 dx, so that means that we need a factor of 3 in there next to our dx. But we can't just put a 3 there. That would change the value of our integral. So what we do instead is we put in a 3 and a 1 3rd. We need both the 3 and the 1 3rd so that we haven't actually changed the value of our function. If we just put in the 3, then we've multiplied our function by 3, and we're not going to get the correct antiderivative. But we only really want the 3 to be there. We don't really want that 1 3rd to be there. We had to put it there so that we didn't change our function. But what we want to do is factor that out. And since 1 3rd is a constant, we can factor it all the way out of our integral. Now we do our conversion. So 3x minus 7, that's u. So 3x minus 7 to the 4th, that's u to the 4th. 3 dx, we figured out earlier that that's du. So that gives us our integral of u to the 4th du. Since those two variables match, we can continue and actually take our antiderivative. So the antiderivative of u to the fourth with respect to u is 1 fifth u to the fifth, and that gives us an antiderivative of 1 15th, 3x minus 7 to the fifth plus c. And we can take a derivative there, and we'll see that that actually does give us our original function of 3x minus 7 to the fourth. Okay, let's do another example. So here we have the integral of x times x squared plus 1 to the fifth. We're going to use u equals x squared plus 1. And that means that my du is the derivative of x squared plus 1, which is 2x times dx. So what this tells me is that I want to have a 2x over there at the end of my integral next to my dx. I have a factor of x, so I'm going to start by rewriting this integral so that the x is over by the dx. But again, I don't just want x, I really want 2x. So I can get that to happen by putting in a 2, but just like before, I can't only put in the 2, because if I leave it the way it looks right now, I've multiplied my function by 2, and it's not the same function anymore. So to keep it the same function, I also have to put in a factor of 1 half. Now, I don't really want the 1 half, so I'm going to factor the 1 half out of my integral and leave everything else in there. So x squared plus 1 to the fifth times my 2x, and now I'm ready to convert this from an x integral into a u integral. So I get 1 half, x squared plus 1 to the fifth, well, u was x squared plus 1, so that's u to the fifth, and 2x dx, that's my du. 
So now I have an entirely u integral. I don't have any x's anymore. That's good. That's what we want. And now I can take my antiderivative. Antiderivative of u to the fifth is one sixth u to the sixth plus c. And then the only thing that's left to do is substitute back in the original variable. One half times one sixth is one twelfth. u was x squared plus one. And there's my final answer. And as you're getting started with substitution, it's a good idea to go back and take the derivative and check to make sure you got your original function. If you've done the substitution correctly, you will need to use the chain rule when you take your derivative. And that's going to cancel out that extra factor of one half in this example to get us back to our original function. Here's some rules of thumb to keep in mind when doing substitution. If you're in doubt as to what to let u equal, Usually a good first try is to let u be the expression inside the most complicated term. It doesn't always work, but it probably works 90% of the time. Secondly, when you're integrating a fraction, if neither the top nor the bottom of the fraction looks more complicated, you're usually better off letting u equal the bottom of the fraction. Again, it doesn't work all the time, but it's a good rule of thumb. Finally, and this really is a rule rather than a rule of thumb, it's okay to move constants like our one-third or our one-half in the last couple of examples. It's okay to move those outside the integral sign, but not x's. You can never move anything that has any x's in it outside the integral. Okay, let's do one more example. This time we've got a definite integral from 0 to 2 of e to the 4x, but we're going to approach it in the same way. We're going to look at the more complicated term here, which is e to the 4x is the only term we have, and the thing inside that most complicated term is the 4x. So let's let u equal 4x, then du is going to equal 4dx. That means I need a factor of 4 in my integral, and as we've seen before, the way that we're going to get that factor of 4 is by simply putting in a 4 next to my dx, but to balance that out so that I keep my function the same, I also need to put in a factor of 1 fourth. We'll factor out that 1 fourth, and we get e to the 4x times 4dx. Now we can convert this to a u integral. I'll come back to the bounds on the integral in just a second. But e to the 4x becomes e to the u, and 4dx becomes du. Okay, so what numbers do we put on our integral sign here? Well, if I put a 0 and a 2 there, that's sort of not technically correct, because now I'm in a new universe. I'm looking at a u integral. And if I put a 0 at the bottom here and a 2 at the top here, that would be like me saying that u is going from 0 to 2. But x was the thing that was going from 0 to 2. I don't know what u is going to or from. So a good way to just account for that, to remind ourselves not to plug in 0 and 2 for u, is on my integral to write x equals 0 and x equals 2. That way I don't forget that those are really values for x rather than values for u. Okay, so now we can take our antiderivative. The antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u. And now I need to plug in x equals 0 and x equals 2. So in order to do that, I need to substitute back in my original variable, which is 4x, that's what u really is. And now I need to plug in 2 and plug in 0. I don't need the x equals reminders anymore because I'm back into the world of x's. So I get 1 fourth e to the 4 times 2 minus 1 fourth times e to the 4 times 0. That gives me 1 fourth e to the 8th, and e to the 0 is 1, so minus 1 fourth. And there's my final answer.